So, hi. Brothers and sisters, let me ask you one thing. How do you treat the Word of God? Do you treat it with respect or reverence, being the sacred text and that is it being God-breathed? Or do you treat it just like any other literature and trivial? It seems to me it boils down to this single reality. If you are a believer or not. The scripture has been the most controversial, if not the most influential text all around the globe. There has never been talked about book except the Bible. That is why we are left with this question. What is God's word to you? Hi, this is Christopher Nino Arca and you're watching Bible in Focus where we will talk about our experiences and human conditions in light to sacred scripture. Now, there is only a single reality that we have to understand. Progress in science and human development mostly stray away from the absolute truth gearing towards what? Perspectivism, relativism, and subjectivism. This worldview adapted its nature from the prioritization of human identity, individualistic point of view. This became widespread, especially during the postmodern times. It quickly spread like wildfire. Christianity and everything about God became an afterthought. And that is because a bifurcating line between faith and reason became prevalent. But in reality is, faith and reason does not contradict each other. Each does not need, it, it does not need to. When in fact, faith is and reason complements one another. I think all of you must have heard the saying where reason stops, faith starts. And it is true with the vice versa. Now, let's take a look at Hebrews 11 verse 1. Now, now faith is the reality of what is hoped for. The proof of what is not seen. Well, what does this mean? What does this mean? Does it say we have to believe crazy stuff? Well, that's not what it says. Faith is the reality of what is hoped for. The concept of reality here is the true nature of being and consciousness. There is actually no other what there's there is actually no other definition of reality except that here we are talking about the concept and nature of our faith for non-believers faith would not be an issue because for them they would label us Christians that we are what disillusioned because of our faith when in fact non-believers believe in themselves more. That is their faith. That is why their faith is limited. So if something happened to themselves, if, if something happened with themselves, their faith vanish. Let me share with you the text here in the Gospel of Matthew. That's in Matthew 24, verse 35, where it says here, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. You should know. You should know where you should put your faith in. You should know where you, you, should, know where you should put your faith in. Jesus made this clarification. 
everything in this world is temporal and temporary. There is nothing eternal nor permanent in this world. And so if you would rather choose to have faith in something that you can see, that something you can touch, your, your faith is bound to fail you. When your faith is full of what? Devil's advocate of anything? Your faith is bound to fail you. But if you put your faith in Him, no amount of struggle and difficulties can defeat you. So what happens to atheists and non-believers? The truth is, the truth is, only a few in recorded history can attest these individuals became successful and happy in their lives. It's either they became a failure in their lives, in their families, disconnected, discontented with everything in their life. You cannot say that they are authentically happy. Or some would even, what? They commit suicide. Those are what happens to those who do not have Christ in their lives. Those naysayers. This is unfortunately true. But I have to tell you that there are also Christians who are weak in their faith, who entertain naysaying, those who entertain negative talking. They are Christians, but they are negative talkers. That's not being a true Christian. That is no isolated incident. Hebrews 11, verse 2. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 2. The next verse says, Okay, for by this our ancestors were approved. This is actually true. Historically speaking, especially biblical history, people during that time, during those times, are believers. They are so intoxicated with God. They are so intoxicated with God talk. What do I mean by God talk? God knows, God approves, God sees, and not the other side. They breathe Him, they drink Him, they feel Him. That is their faith. Every moment they got, they are in constant communication with God. Their prayer life were very rich. Compared to our generation now, generation full of naysaying, there is no comparison. Just like Abraham, it was credited to him as righteousness. Righteousness and faith. But, goes, but both goes hand in hand. Righteousness and faith goes hand in hand. You cannot be a righteous person and not be a believer. You cannot be a righteous person and have to say, time have no faith. There is no such thing. What makes a person righteous is because of their faith. So you cannot really say that any non-believers can, can be decently, what? They can be decent and then and they can be good and at the same time be righteous. There is no such thing. Because the only nature of righteousness is living a godly life. Full of instructions and precepts of the Lord. You cannot be a non-believer and be righteous at the same time. It is contradictory. It is non -existent. Existent. There is no such thing. It doesn't make sense at all. So how then can we become righteous? Well, actually, uh, St. Paul, Paul um, wrote that to Timothy. Let me share that with you. That's in 2 Timothy.
That's in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 to 17. This is a very famous verse that Paul wrote. All scripture is inspired by God and is profitable for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting, hear this, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. That's it. No amount of human progress in science can do that. All you need is what is written in scriptures for you to become righteous. If you have God's word in your mind, in your heart, if you fill your entire being with God's word, nothing would go wrong. Because the truth of the matter is the scripture is sacred. What is contained within these texts is the sole truth and reality of life, of everything. Contained within these pages of the scriptures are facts of life, the true story of humanity, and the divine encounter of God with them, with, with man. And the fact is, the arguments of the non-believers, atheists, and some scientists, they are all just arguing in circles, making you lost in the maze they themselves made. They are also lost inside their own maze. When, it, when in fact it is true, it is very sad but true. When you read their work, it is as if they are trying also to convince themselves that what they are saying and implying is truth. It's hardly knowable what is, actual, what is meant as a fact, what is known as a fact. Results of empirical findings and tests from judgment and opinion. Psalms 14. I'd like to share with you the texts here in uh, Psalms chapter 14. That's chapter 14 verse 1. It says here, The fool says in his heart, There is no God. They are corrupt. They do, vile th they, they do vile deeds. There is no one who does good. This is usually the problem with atheists and non-believers. They are too proud, self-conceited. They think too much of themselves. And as we move on to the next verse, verse 2, The Lord looks down from heaven on the human race, to see if there is one who is wise, one who seeks God. There is no wisdom inside every non-believers. That you should know. That's just it. A wise person always seeks God through the scripture. You can only be a true Christian if you admit you need wisdom that you need to grow in wisdom, that is where God is. Verse 4, Will evildoers never understand? They consume my people as they consume bread. They do not call on the Lord. Non-believers fail to see their need for God. That is why they cannot see God. They would not find God anywhere. That's why here in verse 5, it says here, Then they will be filled with dread, for God is with those who are righteous. God is only with the righteous. It is, it's very hard to swallow. It is a sad reality that reality kicks you right at the gutter, and you still did not know it then one thing is clear, you have a twisted sense of reality. 
you don't know what reality is. Sadly, people nowadays are like this. They fail to see everything. They fail to see reality. That is why they cannot fully grasp the absolute truth. And that's the gospel truth. Non-believers don't have the eye to see. That's the eye of faith. Uh, as a true Christian, your faith should be in the right place. You need to have your perspective in check so that your faith is grounded. We cannot deny the veracity and infallibility of Scripture. It is truly God-inspired. It is truly God-breathed. And if we take and if we uh, <clears throat> take a look at what Paul said, wh what he wrote to the Romans, that's in Romans chapter fifteen, verse four. Okay, so whatever was written in the past was written for our instruction so that we may have hope through endurance and through the encouragement from the scriptures. Let me read that again. For whatever was written in the past was written for our instruction, so that we may have hope through endurance and through the encouragement from the scripture. That's how important scripture is. It was written for our instruction, our benefit. It is also written so that there is something we can look forward to. And that is God. All words of scriptures points to God. That's that we are all meant to be with God. With God is the full satisfaction of life. And as Christians, we ought to live by example so that we can lead everyone, even the non-believers, to God. Let us pray. Give us, O Lord, the heart to love and accept everyone. For everyone is your children. And you always tell us that there are still other flocks that is separate from yours. Teach us to love even those who are not yet a part of your flock. Grant us the spirit of understanding and patience so that we can live our faith and be an example for others to follow. Lord, we are all but a blank slate. Your grace alone can empower us so, Lord, empower us so even the rest of the world will see your glory and finally accept you as their Lord, God, and Master. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. It's a pleasure being here with you in our Bible in, Bible in Focus session. And hopefully, we could invite you again next time and... Maybe you could also invite your friends and families to watch us here in Bible in Focus. And lastly, lastly, um, good news, we were able to talk to the Archdiocese of Manila and we will be having a Bible fellowship in the Archdiocese level. Now, we're still not, not done with the meeting, but hopefully everything will be um, ironed out. And we will be notifying you, we will be posting details here in our Facebook page as to the schedule of the Bible Fellowship in the Archdiocese. Now, uh, take care. Uh, but And lastly, please don't forget to support the City of God ministry. The ministry needs you so that we could continue on in our evangelization mission. Details of where you could send your help are posted in this 
our live live stream. Take care and God bless.